Democratic lawmakers held President Biden's historic decision on Sunday not to seek re-election, praising him as putting his country and his party before himself. Republicans are saying if Biden cannot run for another term for office, then he's unable to serve as president. House Speaker Mike Johnson has renewed his calls for President Joe Biden to resign. I do think it's problematic. I think millions of the American people believe that this is problematic. This is not the way the system is supposed to work. There's a reason it's unprecedented. You don't just, you know, steamroll uh, the rules in a process because you decide that your candidate is no longer so That's what's happened here. I think you're right about it. She will not be tough to beat. I'm not at all. We're excited about that comment. I have uh, suggested that the president should resign. The reason is, if everyone acknowledges that he is incapable of running a campaign, that is clearly incapable of running a campaign, he has nuclear codes, he has major decisions to make every single hour of every day, and he does not have the faculties to do so now. Everyone acknowledges that, including the Democrat Party. I think that should weigh the decision on whether he should continue to serve. Well, let's now cross live to Texas in the United States and speak with AJK Okma. He's a global affairs analyst and also a member of the Republican Party. I should say a proud member. AJK, good to see you and thanks for your time as always. Well, you said this uh, some weeks, many weeks ago. Now here we are. But again, it will seem as if uh, Trump has flipped the script. Uh, is it right to say Republicans may be forgetting their lines? Uh, hey, uh, thank you for having me. And, um, you know, like I said, uh, you know, many, many months ago when we had this conversation, I told you that we're just going to get to a crisis point and most likely the Republican Party will prevail and Trump will still be standing. And so what you will see happening in these few days or, you know, when Biden said I'm stepping down, it wasn't necessarily the choice of Biden to step down. It was just the pressure of those around him. Now we see a faction of the Clinton side supporting Biden. I mean, supporting uh, uh, Kamala Harris that uh, Biden has endorsed and Obama is not endorsing Kamala Harris. So that tells you the, the nature of the Democratic Party. It's a party of the elite. Uh, and and, and it, you know, they, a group of them get together just like the shepherds and they start to look at after all the sheep that end up sheepish. It's hard to challenge them. It's hard to question what they do because one of those, you know, heavy top leaders, leaders, you say what they do, everybody falls in line. I'm hoping whatever it is, you know, that they want to do, we're just looking for a candidate that will stand there and, and debate Trump, you know, in the, these few months we have before the election on November 5. Uh, what you can see, the American people are getting angry, they are getting disappointed because, you know, Biden case was just like a pregnancy in an early stages. Everybody said, oh, is he pregnant? Is he not pregnant? And then boom, you know, he can't hide it anymore. The debate on June 27th just exposed, you know, his health situations and his physical abilities. And he don't want a leader, especially the one that says the most powerful man in the world to look like Biden. You know, people are going to exploit it. People are going to make a joke of it. You know, health is something sometimes we don't have control over. But when he comes to that point, do yourself a favor and step aside. Let somebody know. I mean, for those who read the Bible and believe in it, isn't that a saying that his or her place let another take? You know, the Democrats are fond of hanging on to power. You could see it with their former Supreme Court justice that didn't want to go and the Diane uh, Feinstein that didn't want to leave. And, and what does that do for the nation? Uh, but anyway, <laughs> I'm a very happy Republican at this point. But again, my happiness will be manifest if, if in November 5th, American people do the right thing. Well, it's okay. He doesn't look like home and dry. Uh, according to the Democrats, they still think that uh, the GOP uh, has a fight way ahead of them. Now, help us make sense of what this would mean in the, uh, in the case that... Uh, Kamala Harris ultimately gets the backing of the party and picks the nomination uh, or at the convention to run for office. But you know, uh, you know, the, uh, the Democrats have a, a unique way of doing their nomination. So if Biden delegates, you know, said, okay, we're going for for Kamara because of, you know, the president endorsing her, you still have the super delegates, about 700 and something of them, you know, who are unelected and they also can be influenced by what the, uh, the power 
uh, I mean, the, the power block of the Democratic Party wants to do. So, you know, Kamara Harris, we know her performance as vice president. And, and, and so we, we, you know, we are waiting for her to come up to be the nominee because she will be an easy beat. You know, uh, she does. She has an identity crisis. She's not African American. She claims to be African American. The dad is Jamaican, Canadian. Mom is Indian. So you know, sometimes the Democrats do this stretching of you know finding anybody, no matter what your uh, degree of connect connectivity is to the black race, and make you black, just like Obama. Obama is not African American. He's a Kenyan American. So you know, in the real sense of it, we haven't even had a an African American that is somebody whose parents you know you know, have, you know, proven record of being in this country for, uh, for more than 100 years, getting into the Oval Office or close to the power. But the Democrats play the game of, you know, making anybody who looks like black. So, again, these are things that are going to be coming out uh, once, if Kamala Harris becomes a nominee. And we want her to be, become a nominee because she's going to be walked all over and she's going to be dismantled easily. Okay, let's see if we can close on this. Does this uh, new... Our trees uh, throw open what you want to call the political race of racism, not in the negative term. Do you think this will be about race? American politics is always about race. Uh, you know, when Obama ran, I, I was glad to support him because I even wrote an article at the time. It's time, you know, to break the hold of typical white Anglo-Saxon people holding it. And I'm a Republican. I saw that opportunity and I ran it for him. I was an alternate delegate for him and I met him at dinner with him. Um, so, uh, you know, I, I'm always objective. I want to see everybody getting fairly represented, but I don't want to be labeled what I am not in order to gain a political traction. And that's what the Democrats are typical of doing. You know, they label people and they push it on the race or the group of people who feel marginalized and they all get excited. At the end of the day, Obama had eight years in office. Can anybody talk about what he did for Chicago. And even at the time, he said he's not president of the black people, but he got 98 or 90 something percent of the black vote, the highest any presidential candidate has ever gotten. What did he do? You know, he wanted to be a celebrity. And that's how he approaches his role, a celebrity president. The presidency is not about celebrity. It's not about popularity. It's about making further decisions, especially to right void all right, things have been gone wrong in a part, in a certain sector of America. Obama didn't do it. Uh, he, you know, he went to Africa. What did he do for Africa? He pitched gay rights and all this other stuff. I mean, he went to Kenya, and the Kenyan people told him, we don't want that. That's not our issue. So that's what you see. Race is always a factor. To the extent is a factor, I can tell you. I vote as a Republican, and and you know, I I've never hesitated to vote, and I participate. I am engaged. I'm an invested Republican, invested in the sense that they know me. I know them. I don't show up in everything, but I know how to call and talk to anybody in the Republican Party if I choose to. So this is a very uh, interesting. Uh, point in American presidential history. Some people are calling for Biden to resign. If Biden resigns, then Kamara automatically becomes president number 47, even if it's for two months. And we don't want her to be that. Let, let Biden hang in there. If he is going to hide in his basement or go to work once out, one hour a day, that's fine. Let him finish his term because we know he's gone. He's a deflected tire. You can pump it. It's, it's not even a spare tire. Let him go deal with his health and we wish him well because every one of us is going to exit whether we have power or not. Well, AJK, always a delight speaking with you. And my take home there is the Republicans know you, you know them. And I say Nigerians <laughs> also know you. Well, we'll have this conversation in the days to come. Thank you for your time, AJK. Well, thank you for your suspenders. And look at it, green and green. You know, I'll see you in a few days. You can count on that. Well, we can't wait to have you back in Nigeria.